The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Journeys into American History. The Last of the Mohicans adaptation by David Calcutt of James Fenimore Cooper's classic novel of war and adventure set during the struggle between the British and the French for control of 18th century colonial North America. The year 1757, and England and France are at war over the possession of North America. The scout Hawkeye and his Mohican friends Chingachgook and Uncas have come to the aid of Cora and Alice Monroe and their guide Major Haywood, who have been deliberately led astray into the woods by the vengeful Huron Magua. Pursued by a Huron war party, Hawkeye successfully leads Cora and Alice to Fort William Henry, where their father is commanding officer. Shortly after their arrival, however, Monroe is forced to surrender the fort to the besieging army of General Montcalm. Now, under terms of truce, the English army and the colonial settlers leave the fort under the gaze of the French troops and their Huron allies. I move among my people. I speak, and they listen. I am their son. I am filled with power. The time has come. Now, Magua will taste his revenge. Now, Magua will strike. Why is that child crying? Can't the woman keep it quiet? I'm sure its mother's doing all she can to soothe it, Alice. Miss, would it trouble you to take Yunga from me a minute while I fix my pack? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> Don't cry. Cora, look. In the trees. Yes. I can see them. Look straight ahead, Alice. Keep walking. No! There! I saw him. Who? There! Do you see? It's him. Magua. It's to be expected. But he's only one of many. Have you forgotten his words to you? I shall never forget them, Alice. But the French troops are at hand and we are under their protection. I'll take my boy back now, miss. Uh, yes, of course. Oh, he's quieter. You must have a gentle touch. William, his name is. Named after the fort. He was born here. My husband serves with the Royal Americans. Then my sister's fiancé is your husband's commanding officer. Major Haywood? Your fiancé, you say? Then you must be Colonel Monroe's daughters. A new miss. That's right. What's going on over there? Suddenly the convoy comes to a halt. All watch, uneasily. Limbs stiffen, nerves tense. And suddenly it's over. The Hurons move back, and the convoy moves on. <laughs> Go on, back your old. See that? I showed him, huh? Put a pack in the way of murdering heathens. Now look what they've done. Same of crying again. Why? Why? How long must this go on? It's not far by this road to Fort Edward. That's right, miss. Only a few hours. Oh, where's Duncan? He said he would come back when we were clear of the lake. And he will come. But he is an officer and has his men to attend to. <gasps> Take my hand, Alice. We must show them no fear. After this war is over, it's then we must turn our attentions to. Them and all their breed. They're the real enemy. This land won't be safe to live in till we've driven the whole lot of them out of here. Hey. Shh. Billy! What's the matter with you? Shall I take him again? I won't want to trouble you, Miss Monroe. It's no trouble. Well, then... But before I can take the child, a single Huron suddenly approaches, stands before the woman, hand outstretched. Give. What? Give. What do you want? That. Give me that. It's your shawl. My shawl? Give. Ah, stop it! Lose! No, it's all he wants. Give. Give. Let go! Get your hands off! Please, let him take it. I'm trying to! He's stuck! Give. I'll help you. Uh, here. Ow! <laughs> I'm all right. Help me up, quickly. Ow! Oh, no! Help me, help me! 
I take, you give. Give me my baby. You give. Yes, yes, anything. Take anything. You give, you give. Take it. It's yours. Here. Woo! My baby. I see it. I watch it happens. The child hangs from his fist. The mother kneels on the ground. She holds up the shawl, a red shawl with fringes. He he turns away from her. Look on his face. What is that look? He holds up the child by its legs. The child hangs in the air. There's a stone nearby. Why am I looking at it? What is it about that stone? It's changed colour. First grey, now red. Red moving, running. What is it? What? Yes. I see now. Clear. He raises the child by its legs in the air, swings it round, and smashes its head on the rock. And the woods erupt as if the trees and the leaves and the grass and the sky have been ripped wide open, spilling horror and death out into the world. The French! Why aren't they stopping this? Your daughters, sir! Look to them for me! I must go to Montcalm! But, sir! He'll help us, I know! Take charge here, Major! Take charge of what? The Colonel turns his horse, rides back along the road. All about him, slaughter and bloodshed. The doings of hell brought into the light. Yet no hand is lifted against him. Weapons raised to strike are suddenly stilled. When he passes, the Hurons fall back. As if a light shines from him, unharmed he rides away from the massacre, out onto the plain, where gallant troops of the French king keep to their posts, stand fast and firm. Why do your troops stand here? They are obeying my orders, Colonel. Your orders? Stand at their posts until the English force has passed. Don't you know what's happening, man? Can't you hear? I hear the noise of a small skirmish, which I'm sure your men are more than competent. This is no skirmish. It's a massacre, and it's been carried out by your Huron allies. You are wrong, Colonel. The moment the treaty was signed between us, Huron were dismissed from my service and left free to go about their own business. General Montcalm, in the cause of common humanity, I implore you. I am sorry. I am powerless to act. There is nothing I can do. And he too stands firm and fast, ears hearing nothing, eyes fixed upon the far distance where the glistening waters of the lake meet the sky's rim, edged with a rising line of darkness. Hawkeye! There! My friend, I'm thinking this battle's past being fought. I think so too. The Huron's power is strong today. We're of the same mind then. We're not young men to run howling to death. It's just a matter of choosing the best cover. You see those trees? That clump of pines? There. What about Uncas? He will find us if he lives. Okay. Down, Major! A flying shot. It was well done. Captain, your horse, Major. Dad, have you seen Colonel Monroe's daughters? Ain't they with you? No, with the party of settlers. That was the first group to be attacked. No. And the chances are... Okay. Now! The way is clear. Right. Let's go. What are you doing? What any man of sense ought to do, beating a retreat. You can't. There's no order being given. Look about you, Major. This thing's way beyond any of your orders. Who's going to listen to them? There's only one order worth of being now, Major, and that's every man looks to his own skin. Wait! And if you'll take my advice, you'll look to yours. Where 
Where are we going? The woods. If we can reach them. The woods? They... Yes. Just a little further. No. We're almost there. I'm not going. It's our only hope. Loose me. I must find Duncan. I must go to him. No, Alice. I have to find him. Alice! <laughs> But Magua is there, takes her, swings her round, his hand in her hair, knife at her throat. Yes! Look! I have the daughter of Monroe. Does she die? Takara! Does she live or die? Answer! No, let her live. Her scalp would go well outside my lord. Don't let him! Please, I beg you. Come with me then. It is as I said. Magua will have Monroe's daughters. My knife is at her throat! Yes, we will come. Let us go! Magua! Magua turns suddenly, sees Uncas, releases Alice, faces his foe. <laughs> Uncas runs, knife raised, aims a blow, misses as Magua turns aside, and struck by his war club, Uncas falls. Die, Mohican! Spare him! He dies! No! It is nothing. Today he lives. Come! Cool, what's happening? It's all right, Alice. Uh, we must go. We'll be safe, I promise. Colonel Monroe! Damn him. Damn him. We must sound the retreat. Damn them all to hell. Where are my daughters, Major? I, I, I don't know. Perhaps they're... Lost, yes. Colonel, what all are you... All lost. We can still regroup. It's madness, Major. Madness. Beyond your control. What have we done? We're all to blame, all of us. There's nothing we can do. What order shall I give, sir? Nothing. 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 Still, the slaughter goes on. Relentless, unchecked, as the screams of the dying and the cries of the killers rise into the sky like scattered birds. Where we hear them, faint, at the top of the hill, gazing down at the horror below us. And as I stand there, suddenly I realize I'm glad. Glad I'm here, not down there. Glad it's them, not me. I look away. Lift my eyes to the shining lake, the distant mountains. Feel the morning air cool on my face. Then Magua speaks, and we turn and follow him into the forest. Evening, three days later, the fort lies in smoking ruins. Heavy and dark, the sky hangs low. And upon the plain, ravens walk among the scattered dead. My God. I've stood on many a field of death in my time. But I swear I've never seen the hand of the devil so plain. The Hurons will not boast of this to their women. Let them hide in the north behind their mother's skirts. They will sing the death song before the leaves fall. There are so many. True. So we'd best set to work before the sun sets. We search among the dead for Alice and Cora. It's grim work and done in silence. I steel myself for the terrible moment. But it doesn't come. We don't find them. Major. Orcas has found something. What is it? The dark hair one wore this. Cora's veil. Good work, Orcas. She goes this way, into the trees. And here, see, her foot going up, and another, not her smaller. Alice? Yes, the two of them, here and here. They've escaped? No, prisoners. Look, another is with them. A man. Huron. Magua. Let me see. Yes, it's him, sure enough. How can you tell? Surely one man's prints like another's. Might as well say one man's face is like another, Major. Each man's got his way of walking, and them that studies the signs can read them as you'd read a book. We know the Huron step. We tracked him when we were back at the falls. When he walks, he turns his foot out, 
and his toe is wide, like this. It is Makwa. What are we waiting for? Let's make after them. No point, Major. These tracks are three days old. He'll have put some miles between us and them by now. All the more reason, then, for not delaying. We're not starting out on a squirrel hunt here, Major. We'll be going into enemy territory and crossing lands few human feet of trod. But they're in danger. I don't think so. Not of death, at least. If Mago had wanted to kill them, he'd have done it here. They're his prize, and he'll take care to see they come to no harm. The wisest thing we can do is rest here for the night. In the morning, we'll be fresh and ready to start our work like men, not hot-blooded boys. We go back, into the ruined fort, light a fire, cook meat, but I have little stomach for it. Hawkeye and Chingachgook sleep, but Uncas remains awake, sitting by the fire, the flame light flickering across his face. Major. Ah. Time to be moving. Already. It's still dark. Morning's not long off. Come on. Chingachgook and Nunkas are waiting by the canoe. Canoe? We found a couple the Hurons left behind. They're damaged, but we've managed to fix one up. It should see us across the lake. But the trail led into the trees. And from there it leads north. That's where Magua's heading. As I said, he's put some distance between us, but we gain some by going up the lake to the northern shore. We should be able to pick up his trail from there. In the dark before dawn, the canoe leaves the shore, glides across the silent water. The day brightens, lengthens, draws towards evening, and at last they approach the northern shore of the lake. Where we drag the canoe ashore, hide it in bushes, move inland, and begin our search for Magua's trail. The Lord is my shepherd. The... What was that? An owl. I thought it's you... It's all right. Manro's daughter fears the sound of the forest. She's tired and weak. You have no fear. No. I no longer fear anything. The things I saw at William Henry. The French man would have made the Huron women. Magua made them warriors. He gave them scalps. Now... They will welcome him to their homes as a great chief. And what of us? What will Magua do with the daughters of Munro? They are his prizes. He will do with them as he wishes. Will he take us to the French? The French are not my people. Take us back to our father then. Ugh. If you do, I give you my word you shall be repaid. I have had payment from the hands of Munro. He rises, comes forward out of the dark, lit by the moon. He stands before me, close, still, eyes staring into mine. I hold his gaze. Then he reaches out, takes my hand in his, and places it upon his chest. Here, you feel this mark. And this, and this. These are the scars given by knives and bullets. They are the marks of a warrior. Now, see the marks that make him burn with shame. And he turns from me, and I see his back, cut and crossed with deep white scars. Munro did this. Munro cut these marks into Magua's flesh, wounded his spirit forever. He moves away becomes a shadow once more, but still his voice comes to me out of the night. Once, Magua was a great chief, born of chiefs. He fought his enemies. He was a flame among his people. In those days, he was happy. Then, white fathers came to the woods. They brought gifts for Magua. Whiskey. Magua drank, and his spirit left him. His heart became bad. His people chased him far from the graves of his fathers. They became outcast, lived alone on the shores of the lake. Then I fell into the hands of my enemies, 
Sir, Magua, who was born a Huron, became a Mohawk. And served my father. Yes. I fought for the Yengeese against my own people. A Huron spilled Huron blood and hung Huron scalps before his tent. My soul grew sick at what I had become. Only the whiskey brought ease to Magua's suffering. He drank, he called out to the spirits of his fathers, he sang and he danced so they should not forget him. Then the soldiers came and caught hold of him. They took him before Monroe. Drinking is forbidden, he said. You will be punished. And I was taken outside and tied to a post. And there, before the eyes of the Yengis and the Mohawks, Magua was whipped like a dog. Once more he comes forward. And I see in his face the rage and the pain. And this time, I look away. When I stood at the post and the blows scorched my back, I made no sound. But my heart was wounded and cried out. Its wounds have never healed. And it cries out still. What is it can ease this pain? Munro's death? No. Munro took Magua's spirit from him. Magua must take something from Munro. The thing he loves best. His daughters. One. To be his squaw. You. No. Once more Magua will be a great chief. You will fetch his water. Plant his corn. Chop his wood. Cook his meat. Munro's daughter shall be Magua's woman, and the heart of the white hair shall bleed by the fire of the Huron. What of my sister? If you do this, your sister goes free. I shall give her to the French, and they shall give her back to the Yengeese. So, the father shall keep one daughter. And if I do not? She dies! <laughs> And you will watch. Then you die. He takes from his belt a strip of dried meat, holds it out to me, looks into my face. Here. Share my food. Eat. And I reach out my hand. And take it. Understand it. If Magua is making for his home country, he must have come this way. There's no other path he could have taken. Perhaps we missed it in the dark. No, the devil's near, all right. I can feel him. But he's cunning, too. He guesses we're after him, and he knows how to cover his tracks. I wish there was something I could do. There's nothing you can do at the moment, Major, except to trust the Chinatrukok and Onkas. When we catch up with Magua, then you'll have your chance. <coughs> there. I believe Onkas has found something. Here. They move off along the stream. That way. Magua hopes to hide his trail, but Onkas sees. Ah, this stone has been moved. The golden hair places her heel in the mud. And here, a twig is broken. I think the dark hair leaves us a sign. I see how he travels. Now, we can follow. Shinachkok. Onkas is an honor to his people. It is true. The son's eyes are sharper than the father's. I feel him, smell him, touch his spirit. I run with my enemy, my footsteps in his. This way and this, I am strong, proud. I am filled with power. I am Magua. Unkas is Magua. Stop! What is it? I smell Huron. We are here. Unkas, what do you see? Tell us. Others meet them here. Warriors, two hands. 
They go up, out of the trees, over the ridge. How long ago? One day, no more. We made up good time. Are they here? Could be. There's only one way to find out. I will go and look. Easy, King Atchukuk. They may be watching for us. If they are here, what do we do? Depends how many of them there are. Unka said ten. There might be more of them over that rise. And even if there aren't, it won't be wise to make a straight fight of it. The first thing they do will be to kill their captives. We'll have to rely on stealth and cunning if we want to get them back alive. Do you have a plan in mind? No, Major, I don't. Chingachukuk, what did you see? Nothing. There is no one there. But Unka said... The Hurom were here, but no longer. They are gone. Where are my shoes? I put them somewhere. I must find them. But they're not here, Alice. They must be. Someone's taken them. Someone's taken my shoes. That was a long time ago, when we were in England. England? We left England. We came on a ship to see Father. And I'm going to be married. Where are we? What is this place? I don't like it here. Alice. I want to go home. Suddenly they're here. Four of them upon us. One holding her. Others laughing as she struggles, dragging her away. What are they doing? Where are they taking her? There she will be safe. Leave her! She goes with them. You, with me. They won't hurt her. Come. Come! They were here, sure enough, and not many hours since. You see the fire? Its ashes are still warm. Warriors make camp here. They wait for Magua. When he comes, they eat, sleep, sun rises, and they go. Which way? Oh, It's not hard to tell, Major. Even your eyes can see their trail leading out of here. They must feel safe. Must be going somewhere they're not afraid of being followed. But we shall follow. Do you think I'd turn back when we've come this far? This Mingo devil's led us on crooked paths and dark trails ever since we first met him. He's a thorn in my side, and I mean to have him out. I don't know what it is we'll find when we finally run him down, but if he was to lead me to the brink of hell's mouth, I'd jump straight in there after him and not give it a thought. They follow the trail into the mountains, coming by nightfall to a valley beneath the crags. A stream tumbles down to a small pool. Thorn bushes cling to the backs of stones. And below, the dark is lit by many fires. Smoke rises from the roofs of many lodges. A great settlement hidden among the mountains. The last refuge of a scattered nation whose chiefs once bestrode the wide earth. Is this the Huron camp? No, Major. Not Huron. Who then? Ask Chingachkuk. He knows. They are Delaware. Their blood runs in my veins. The trail of the Huron has led Chingachkuk to his own people. The Mohicans go down to take a closer look at the settlement. We wait among the bushes and rocks for their return. The night grows darker the mountain air colder, and the moon rises full in a clear sky. They were once masters of all these lands, the first people to walk here, so their legends tell, and the fathers of all other tribes, Iroquois, Oneida, Seneca, Mohican. Even the Huron, their ancient enemies, can call on the claim of common blood. And Magua calls on that claim now. It would seem so. I think he has more on his mind than just the selling of his captives. He's come here for some other purpose, though what that might be, I can't tell. The devil's deep, too deep for me. There's something twisted in his soul. I felt it the moment I first saw him. Whatever his purpose is, it's imperative we rescue Cora and Alice as soon as possible. I'm one with you there, but it's easier said than done. Look, I what is it? I think I heard something. Yes. Someone's coming up through the rocks. Chingachkuk and Uncas. If it was them, we wouldn't hear them. I'll take a look. Do you see anyone? Yes. 
One man climbing this way. Huron? No. Tell you the truth, I, I can't rightly see what he is. And he pulls himself up onto a ledge of rock. A lean, ragged figure, head shaved, face painted. He stands and lifts his arms to the moonlit sky. Lift up your heads, all you gates! I'll lift them up, you have our last doors! Help, help me, Major! Arise! Oh, Lord, save me! I can't hold him! Deliver me! Let's take his head like a lamb! Rending me in pieces! It's enough! <laughs> No, no, just keep still, and we won't hurt you, all right? Right. Right. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No more noise of this night will put an end to your ranting for good. That's better. Now, tell us who you are. I... I have... I have forgotten. Like a dead man. And in my mind I am like a broken person. His name, or the name by which he chooses to be known, is David. A travelling preacher who, through excess of zeal and faith, wandered too far north and was taken captive by the Delaware. They would have slain me, but whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. I spoke to them the words of the psalm. Of whom should I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Yes, they would have left him unharmed. The blood of holy men and fools is sacred to the Delaware. How long have you been with them? How long? I am weary with groaning. Too long, by the looks of it. Have you never tried to escape? Once, yes. But they caught me, cut me, made me lame. Uncas and Chingachgook return and listen as we go on, questioning him, piecing together his story. And it's from him we learn that Magua and his Hurons did arrive at the settlement the day before, bringing with them two women captives. A meeting was held of all the chiefs, at which Magua spoke with the tongue of a serpent, a voice of honey and brimstone. And though he couldn't follow all that was said, it seems that Magua has come to make some kind of bargain with the Delaware. The Huron shall die. All in good time, Uncas. Once we've decided on our course of action. What is that to be? I'm not sure yet. We have little time for delay. If this man knows where they are, could we not attempt to steal Cora and Alice away while it's still dark and the Delaware sleep? We could, but it would be against my nature. What do you mean? To go like a thief among the lodges of the Delaware doesn't sit well in my heart. They're a good people and have never done me harm. For myself, I'd prefer to go there in the clear light of day and speak to them, a man among men. Preacher, tell me, is Tamanon still with his people? Tamanon? Yes. Tomorrow he speaks and gives judgment. Who is this Tamanant? A great chief and a wise man of the Delaware. This might give us hope, Chingachgook. His words carry much power among our people. When Tamanon speaks, it is so. Yet the Delaware are far from the land of their fathers, and the Huron is among them with brave words. I do not know what Tamanant will say. But I say we act now. I am with open hand. The daughters of Monroe must be stolen away. Chingachgook, the son, speaks for his father. It seems I'm outvoted. It's settled then. Not quite. We need to know exactly where the prisoners are being kept. You, preacher, can you tell us? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. She's here. The young one, right here. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and led them forth by the right way. He tells us that Alice is in a cave nearby, guarded only by two Hurons. She's alone in there. Cora's being kept separately in the Delaware settlement. With only an hour of darkness left, we decide to act swiftly. David will guide Uncas and myself to the cave, then return to lead Hawkeye and Chingachgook to Cora. And as they part, Chingachgook and Uncas, father and son, clasp hands, speak softly one to the other, gentle words of love and farewell. For who can tell when a warrior goes upon his path, if he shall ever lay eyes on his kind again? Open hand. Go into the cave. Now. 
The way is clear. The Hurons? Uncas has two more scalps. It was not hard. They slept and did not wake till my knife touched their throats. Go, quickly. I will put this dog's meat in the bush and keep watch. Do not be long. It will be light soon. Major Hayward climbs down the rocks onto the path, steps over the bodies of the dead Hurons, enters the cave. For a moment he can see nothing, only an immense blackness before him. Then from somewhere nearby, the sound of movement, a drawn breath. Alice? Are you there? Alice? No! Keep back, no! It's all right. Stay away! It's me! Don't touch me! Alice, don't you know me? It's Duncan! Duncan? Yes. I've come for you at last. <laughs> what is it? What's wrong? Duncan, no! Duncan's dead! I, I, I'm not! I'm here! Dead! Dead! I saw him dead! Duncan's dead! He's dead! Please, Alice! Keep your hands off me! Don't touch me! No! Filth! Don't keep away! Keep back! You must come with me! Where's Cora? I want Cora. Where is she? What have you done with her? Nothing. Cora will be here soon. I won't go without her. Cora! Cora! Stop her! No! Loose me! Monster, help me! They're coming! Stop it! Be quiet! Now, quickly, carry her along the path. I will try and lead these away. But go! Uncas goes one way. I another. Carrying Alice, stumbling along the path, struggling through bushes. And all the time, the cries of our pursuers grow louder. Ringing through the morning air as Uncas leads them up over the rocks where they gain ground, draw closer, and at last are upon him. They yelp, howl, cry their triumph, drag their captive down to the village. This is a bad business, Chingachikuk. Yes, but only Uncas is taken. Perhaps the others will wait for us. We must go and see. But they have your son. I do not fear for my son. He is a Mohican. He will show them a man's face. Preacher, what will you do? I? You've given us good service. Come with us if you wish. <sighs> go back, you mean? To what? I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I thank you, but no. In him there is mercy. And in his words I do hope. So do we all. Stay here then and keep watch. Of course. From the bushes he watches, sees the village in turmoil. Men, women, children, armed with clubs and sticks, faces twisted with rage and hate. And they're beating something. Some creature at the center of this human mass is being beaten, blows raining down upon its unprotected body. Then, suddenly, this creature breaks loose, tears itself free from its tormentors, dashes to the center where a wooden post stands, grips it, claiming sanctuary, and gives a cry. The crowd falls silent. They stand in a ring, all eyes upon him. Beaten, bloody, but with eyes still proud, Unka stares back and holds their gaze. Why do the Delaware hold back? Are they afraid of this renegade? Must the Huron show them how to deal with an enemy? Watch then, and learn. You know who I am. I hear a dog whining. A kick of my foot and it will run away with its tail down. Brave words. They are your last. Mohican, you die! Stop! Since when have the Huron trodden on the laws of the Delaware? Who dares to take a life before the judgment has been given? Hear my voice. Hold your hand, Huron. It is I who speak. Temenand, lawmaker, chief of chiefs. He comes forward from his lodge. Where he steps, the ground is sacred. Where he gazes, the world rolls away. The birds are silent. The wind is still. 
All wait for him to speak. Huron, who is this prisoner? Your enemy and mine. A Mohican who fights with the Yangese and comes like a thief among the lodges of the Delaware. One of the Yangi women is gone. Two of my warriors lie dead. He has spilled my people's blood. He has stolen the gift I made to you. I ask the Delaware for justice. I ask them to give his life to me. <laughs> We have to move fast. Onkas will give us what time he can, but it won't be much. Do you think the girl can travel? Not far. She's very weak. She must be moved from here. It may not be long before they come looking for her. We passed a place on the trail where the stream came out of the rock. There was an oak. A and there was a crevice behind. I remember it, yes. It may serve to keep her from the eyes of the Mingos. And I can lay a false track. Good. Major, take Miss Monroe and follow Chingachukuk to this place. Wait for me there. If I don't come, you'll be in his hands, and there's none safer. What about you? Where are you going? To the Delaware camp to see what I can do for Uncas. You intend going down there alone? I do. Chingachukuk, take kill, dear. Mm. I'll stand a better chance if I go unarmed. But you may be walking to your death. There are times when something must be risked for the sake of another. I've walked the wilderness summer and winter with that boy, hunting and fighting in peace and in war. We've shared our food from one bowl, shared the same blanket, and by the one God that made us all, I'll do all in my power to save him. If not, then the Delaware will see how a man can die. We have listened to the Huron. Now let us hear the Mohican. Does Magua speak the truth? Answer. I will only say this. That I think the time has come for me to die. When I see the Delaware listen to the yelpings of a Huron dog. I think this Huron must have poisoned the minds of the Delaware and sent their spirits crazy. They do not know who they are anymore and have forgotten the names of their fathers. <laughs> Enough! <laughs> Mohican, you speak as one who is already dead. Before I give judgment, tell me your name. He is Onkas, the son of Chingachgook and a child of the great turtle. Look upon him, Tamanund. One of the race of Unamis is among you. Now you know that Magwa speaks the truth. Did I not tell you that this Mohican run with the Yengis? And now one comes walking to the very doors of the Delaware. I come here to speak for the Mohican and without weapons. Will the Delaware hear my words? The words of the Yengis are poison. When they speak, the leaves wither. This one has brought death to many of my warriors. He is the Lung Carabine. Silence! La Long Carabine? The name is known to me and is spoken of with respect. My ears are open to your words. No! Huron! You have spoken. A man should know when it is time to be silent. We will hear the Yangi. It shall not be my words that will speak, but your own eyes. Turn them upon Uncas and let them be opened. See the mark he bears upon his chest. Mohican, come forward. Show me this mark. Yes, it is so. Delaware, hear me. One stands before me whose race is the grandfather of nations. The blood of Unamis runs in his veins. Truly, 
The world has grown young again. And the eyes of the dying eagle gaze upon the rising sun. Uncas, you are welcome here. Is this the wisdom of the Delaware? If this Mohican bears the mark of the turtle, he is twice a traitor to his people. This is no chief, but a hound that howls when the Yangi shows him a trail. And you are the dog that eats the offal thrown to him by the French. Magua is a friend of the Delaware. He came to them. He brought them a gift. Where is that gift now? Stolen from them by the Yangi and the Mohican. Ask if it is not so. Speak, Uncas. Have you taken away the daughter of the Yangi chief? Yes. What would the Delaware want with her? What have they to do with this war between the whites? Let her be returned to her father, and the Delaware shall continue to live in peace among the mountains. There is reason in this. The path is open to her. And to myself and La Long Carabine. The friends of the Delaware are free to walk wherever they wish. There is another, daughter. She is among your lodges. Is the path also open to her? She is mine. I claim her by right of conquest. Oncas, what do you say to this? He can say nothing. He knows she is mine. The Delaware are a just people. What a man has taken belongs to him. Wait! If the woman is here, bring her forward. Let her speak before you pass judgment. It is fair. We will hear the words of the Yangi woman. They come for me. Lead me into the light. I see Hawkeye, Onkas, Magua. I see a ring of people, all eyes upon me. Silent, watchful. I feel the weight of the sky above me. I feel the weight of the earth beneath me. I lift my head, step forward, and my feet are firm. Girl, you came here with this Huron. Was it by your choice? He brought me by force. I did not come willingly. You were taken from the field of war. If the slaughter of innocents can be given that name. He would have you as his wife. He is a great chief among his nation. His hands are red with the blood of my people. My heart is filled only with hatred for him. Huron? Her mind is in the tent of her father. An unwilling maiden brings no happiness to a warrior. It is not for happiness that I take her. For what reason, then? Magua's reasons are his own. The woman is my captive, and my claim is upon her. Speak the words, and let us depart. Uncas, is this just? He has a conqueror's right. It is the law. Shall the words be spoken? Yes. Then you shall speak them. Hawkeye, is there nothing to be done? For the moment, no. Uncas, say what you must. I know you are bound by your law. I will go with Magua. Hawkeye, see that Alice is cared for. She has suffered much. And tell my father. No. He will understand. Speak now, Uncas. Look into my eyes. And I am not afraid. This Huron takes nothing. And my heart is strong. Take your captive, Huron, and depart. <laughs> Come, daughter of Munro. Now you are Magua's squaw. Magua! Look at the sun. While 
he rests in the trees. I am a Delaware. But when he stands above the mountains, I am a Mohican. And I shall be on your trail. I hear a crow speaking. I look around and I see dogs and rabbits where I should see men. I spit on you. When the French ask me where are the Delaware, I shall say, I do not know. I could not find them. Watch my shadow as I go and see how it passes over the graves of the Delaware. They pass into the mountains. Slowly the sun rises. Hawkeye brings Hayward and Alice out of hiding, leads them to the safety of the Delaware village. Where the girl is delivered unto gentle hands, which tend and nurse her injured spirit. And where Uncas waits at the edge, alone, watching the sun's light climb among the slopes. I paint my face for war. My heart is strong. I am ready. I wear my life upon my fingernails. All my fathers are here. They crowd around me, laughing, singing. Out of the sun I see an eagle flying. His feathers are white. His wings spread across the world. He calls me, and my spirit soars, rising towards him. They go, following the Huron's trail, climbing higher over the rocky path, the mountain rising sheer to their left, falling to their right into a deep chasm. And here, as the path turns onto a wide ledge where a platform of rock juts out into the air, they find their quarry. There, ahead of us, we have them. Let our rifles speak true and clear. Again, hell's hungry and wants its meat. Again! Again! The smoke clears. The final shots ring out. Smell of burnt powder drifts away on the wind. All the Hurons are dead now save one, and he stands unbowed on the ledge of rock, one hand raised with a knife, the other entwined in the hair of Cora Monroe. Stay! No further! Go back, or the white woman dies! You beaten, Magua! Send her to us and you go free! You have my word! There is no meaning in your word! No, the Mohicans! They have made themselves dogs to the white man. Magua is a Huron! No man's dog! Hear my word, Huron! Harm her, and your scalp hangs at my belt! It is the chattering of a jackdaw! Magua hears nothing but the cry of his own tongue, and it is the cry of victory! Shoot Hawkeye! It does not matter about me! Shoot him! No, no. He is mine. I shall take him. You hear her? She wishes to die? Watch then! Tell Monroe how Magua's knife cut into his daughter's throat! He swings me round, touches the blade to my throat. I feel its cold steel. I see his face above it, twisted with triumph and rage. I wait for death. But it does not come. I cannot kill you. You have taken Magua's soul. And his eyes meet mine. And there's something in them beyond rage. Something that crosses the spaces between us. A moment of knowing and recognition. Then Uncas is upon him, and they struggle together, Huron and Mohican, hand to wrist, limbs locked, feet planted into the rock. 
Then a foot slips, Hooker stumbles, and the knife stabs down no! into Cora's back as she throws herself into its path. Uncas feels the weight of her body upon him. He lifts her, gently lays her down. His fingers brush the hair from her face, but she's already dead, and the last dying light fades from her eyes. Huron, you die! The white faces are dogs, the Mohicans women, and I leave them on the rocks for the crows! He turns, leaps upwards, hands grasping at the rock. But even as he does, fingers grip his heel, pull him back down, drag him towards the edge. For a moment they hang on the lip of the rock. Then, wrapping his arms tight around the Huron, Uncas rolls and kicks free. And with a single cry, they fall together into the abyss. Why should I weep? A young man has gone to the country of his fathers. He was good. He was brave. He filled his time with honor. The great spirit has need of him and called him away. As for me, I am a blazed pine. My race has gone from the hills and I am alone. No, Chinachkuk. Not alone. I am like you. I have no kin, no people. God has placed us on a journey that takes the same path. Let us travel it together. And they grasp hands and feel the warmth that flows from the one to the other and bow their heads over the shining earth. In the final part of The Last of the Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper, dramatised by David Calcutt, you heard Michael Feast, Philip Franks, Helen McCrory, Naomi Radcliffe, Oaken Jones, Clarence Smith, Alfredo Mickelson, Russell Dixon, John Jardine, Garrick Hagen, Robert Whelan and Joe Spear. It was directed by Michael Fox.